Hello everybody, this is Andy again. About a year ago, I made a video which I called World Without End. In it, I talk about the six-day creation week with the seventh-day rest, recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 1, and declared how God had testified of his entire plan in that one chapter. I spoke about many things, but there was one thing which I deliberately chose not to speak about uh, for reasons I'll get into momentarily. But before I get into that, I wanted to bring to mind Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Okay, so God left us witness of himself in the things that he made in his very creation. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. So, in this video, World Without End, which I'll tag here, one side or the other, can't remember which side that it appears. At about the 30 minute mark, somewhere around there, up to about an hour, I begin to talk about day four. The sun, when God created the sun. However, there were two great lights that God created on day four. Let me go back to Genesis chapter one and read that for you. Genesis chapter one, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater lights to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Amen. So God created two great lights. I spoke about the one, the sun, and how that testifies of Jesus Christ. Not that Jesus Christ is the Son God, because that's foolishness, and we know that from the scriptures, and even our own conscience bears witness that that is foolish. But God testified of himself in his creation and his plan for all things. The other great light that I did not speak about was the moon. And the reason that I didn't speak about the moon was because there are few among us who believe in a doctrine that is called flat earth. And in this flat earth model, you have the world encapsulated in what would appear to be like a snow globe kind of thing. <laughs> you have the firmament that stretches from one end of the plane to the other end and everything else inside. You know, we have the globe model that has the firmament that goes around. But this one, it's from one end to the other. And so with the globe model, you have the moon that revolves around the earth and then the earth that revolves around the sun. Okay. But with the flat earth model, you have what's 
called local sun and local moon, which means that the moon and the sun are within this firmament. It's within our atmosphere, as it were. And they believe also, I've had a, a man that used to walk with us that tried to share these things to with me, and it was very hard to understand and receive, but he said that the sun and the moon each create their own light. They are their own light source. The sun creates a hot light and the moon a cold light. This is why they are able to testify that they each create their own light because in the globe model you have the moon that revolves around the earth and the earth around the sun and the moon reflects the light from the sun on the earth when it is in darkness. Okay, so that's how the sun or the moon gets its light is from the sun. But in the flat earth model, it bears its own light. Now the problem with this is they say that it has to be a bear that create its own light because the light is cold that comes off the moon. Well, right here I have a lamp and it's making really hot light. I can feel it. I can feel the heat coming off it. I can feel it on my face. And now I have here this little three by five card. My daughter drew a chicken. Now, if I hold this up here, I am, I can see light from this hot source, but the light that's coming off and reflecting towards me is cold. It has no temperature because the heat is over here. Okay, a simple basic science. You can understand that uh, and understand that why the moon doesn't cast lots of heat onto the earth with its light because it doesn't create its own light it is reflected onto it so here in genesis chapter 1 verse 16 and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also okay And uh, just a side note, the reason why I didn't put this in the video was because I love these brothers who believe in this doctrine and I really didn't want to cast something before their path they weren't able to receive yet. They were very, very persuaded in this doctrine. I don't know if they still are or not, but it was deep, really, deeply rooted in them and it's something that only the Lord can undo. And after... A brother reach, reached out to me, was it about a month ago, a young brother asked me after watching this video, World Without End, he asked me, what of the moon? And so I excitedly testified to him what the Lord showed me concerning it. And I also shared that with another brother, an elder, who encouraged me that uh, I should make um, an amendment to that video to testify of these things and I just put it before the Lord and been prayed about it and it's been on my mind a lot nearly every day and so I felt that it is time regardless if it can be received by them or no so let's go to Luke chapter 1 and read about two encounters with the angel Gabriel Beginning in verse 5. There were, I'm sorry, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, 
According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient of the wisdom or to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Okay, verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. This was the first great light, the moon. And now in verse 26 of the same chapter, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, in the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast fa found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Amen. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Praise the Lord. So here in Luke chapter 1, we have two great lights. John the Baptist, who came first, and Jesus Christ, who came after. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So John the Baptist came first. So does the moon. Verse 19 of Genesis 1. And God said, oh, I'm sorry, 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Evening and the morning were the fourth day. See, we do things backwards here. We do morning, then evening. But in the scriptures, it's evening, then morning, for a reason. Because the moon bears the light of the sun and testifies that it is coming. Right now, it is dark outside and the moon is out. Though I can't see it, I know it is out. Excuse me. It testifies to me, even though I cannot see the sun, that the light of the sun is there, that the sun is coming. I know that the sun is going to come because the moon shines its light. Okay. The light of the moon is the sun. Now, in John chapter 1, It says in verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, 
that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. See, John the Baptist was not that light. The moon does not have its own light, but bears the light of the sun. Are we seeing it yet? See, God created, in, uh, created this order. He put in his own creation a testimony daily, every single day, of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be as, excuse me, not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the, of the sea, beyond Jordan, in Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. This is the light that John the Baptist came to testify of. This is the light that the moon testifies of, even to me right now. Although I can't see the sun, where is the sun? Well, I have a testimony right there. The sun is not far off. It's behind me. It's on its way to rise. That's east. That's one point behind me. <laughs> so you don't have this with this flat earth theory everything is inside and I, I, I still don't understand how that's believable but anyway it, it apparently is so John chapter 1 we just read in verse 6, there was a man sent from John, who's, uh, sent from God, whose name was John. That same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. See, John himself even testified that he was not the Christ. And moving forward in, let's see, where was it? Yes. Verse 29 of John chapter 1. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man, which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Amen. See, John testified, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. God created the moon first, but he was a great light. And when that moon was created, it wasn't dark. It bared witness of a light that was to come after. See, even in their own natural birth, John and Jesus, it testifies it testifies of these things. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 34. I'll read 33 and 34 for context, even though it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with what we're talking about. But there's just one precept that I want you to understand. It says, And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. A day for a year. You can read about this also in Ezekiel 4, verse, yeah, chapter 4, verse 6. A day for a year. See, John the Baptist came six months before Jesus Christ. Half a day. The evening and the morning was the fourth day. The moon came first and rose to its strength and then came up the sun and the moon went down. Jesus came second, John came first. 
Amen. Luke chapter 1 again. Luke chapter 1, beginning of verse 67, John's father Zacharias begins to prophesy. I'll read the whole thing instead of cutting it halfway, even though the verse I'm looking for is at the end, but I just like context. I just like this whole narrative. Verse 67, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Amen. See, with the moon you also have phases. Because the moon does not bear its own light, you don't see this with the sun because it is the source. The light of the moon is the sun. And because the moon revolves around the earth, a globe, the earth revolves around the sun, you are going to have nights when the moon is not in line with the sun to show it in its fullness of strength it will the excuse me the phases of the moon begins with the new moon which is black there's no light shining from the sun upon it it's hidden but then it begins to wax which means to grow so when it grows it's waxing through its phases until it gets to a full moon then it's in the fullness of its strength and after that it begins to wane which is to shrink or to get smaller until it goes back to a new moon again and it starts its cycle over see John the Baptist it says in verse 80 and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel just like the moon, it grew, it waxed strong until the full moon when John appeared unto Israel, the day of his showing. Okay? And so with this, you have John chapter 3. I'll begin in verse 25. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth 
and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that, com that cometh from heaven is above all. I'll just finish. It's just a few more verses. Verse 32. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. Amen. See, John the Baptist, he came, he waxed strong until the day of his showing to Israel. And then he testified. What did he testify? You remember? Uh, just right here, John one thirty, I think. Yes. Verse 29 and 30. The next day John seeth Jesus coming to him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. So now we have the sun rising in its strength. And what happens to the moon? It goes away. He must increase, but I must decrease. Amen. You see, in the beginning of the creation of God, Genesis chapter 1, God laid out his entire plan. He hasn't been chasing plan B, trying to figure out how to overcome the devil and how to beat sin. He created this when he created man. He set forth these things from the very beginning. Even John the Baptist repaired the way of the Lord. And we have this witness every single day. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And I don't need to make a separate video about the stars. That throughout the scripture has always been representative of angels. Some are greater and some are less. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Amen. God bless. And go in peace.